when we come out with new features, new firmware that offers new levels of functionality, it's awful critical that those existing customers upgrade the firmware to our latest version. Because by nature, what do we do? Something's working pretty well, I got it working the way I want it to. There's a natural resistance to what? Yeah, I don't want to change that. It's working exactly like I want it to. But with the new firmware and the new features comes expanded value for the customer. So there's a little snippet in there. There's a storyline that says, right, update your firmware. Talk to your Trumbull dealer. Check on the latest version of firmware. And those are the things that I think are really uh, at the key of getting extended value from Trimble products. Uh, there's nothing that makes us more happy when customers come to us and say, man, I've utilized your particular product I bought it a year ago. It may have been a little bit more expensive than anything else in the market. I've upgraded firmware three times, and I cannot believe what I can do with the product. Right? It is not the same product that I purchased, and yet firmware upgrades came right along with it, so they've got extended value over long periods of time. Part of that future proofing concept. So in that, we've got some great things that we put together for, uh, let's start with the Easy Guide uh, 250. On that Easy Guide 250, we show a couple of things there that are that I believe are significant. We have the ability to map points, lines, and areas. And that point, line, and area mapping gives us the opportunity to just have a little bit more control of what we're doing with the 250. Again, because we have a color display and we can map those features in a field, at the time that we're in the field, we then have the opportunity to have that data stored that we can take to our office software. We can also go back and navigate to those points in the field. So again, if you think about that level of utility, it's just a little bit extra. I've marked a feature, I've got a broken tile line, I've got a wet spot that I want to go back and touch up. Let me note that on my 250. Okay. So essentially, I'm here at this position, and I'm going to mark a point feature. And again, it's a soft key, or it's a key press on the 250 uh, as well. So on that, right, because that's what we're doing. We're driving the tractor, we're thinking about our business, we're thinking about the field, you're thinking, man, I'd like to come back and look at this in two weeks. How do I get there? Which farm was it? Which field was it? Now I've got the ability to go back and navigate to that. The other thing that's really nice about the 250, we often think about uh, farm equipment, put it on the tractor, put it on the sprayer. But frankly, the 250 is small enough you can put it in your pickup, put it on a four-wheeler, right? Maybe some mid-year scouting that you want to do to go back to some of those places. So there's that feature uh, in the 250. There's also uh, an interesting uh, feature there, which is night mode, and, and essentially a color scheme. And again, it may not necessarily have an implication on overall functionality of the system, but it gives you the opportunity to have a little different view, especially when we're operating longer hours in the evenings. Uh, especially when we're, we're tied up with uh, uh, the Easy Steer system, we can put the Easy Steer with the 250, and that gives you another color scheme. And again, it's just really a, a way to fine tune and enhance that particular product. So again, both of those uh, come to us with uh, the new version of firmware, and the new version of firmware is released later on. Uh, this spring. The Easy Guide 500, of course, it has the same software, the same functionality, and uh, in that, one of the things that we looked at is we're, as we were doing multiple fields over multiple years, uh, the other functionality that we added to that firmware is the ability to have easier data management and easier recognition of fields. And a function in there is called Field Finder, which is the visual representation of the field that you're closest to. So if you're out there in the field and you're thinking, okay, I'm pulling into a field and I've got a 40 acre here and 60 there, and which one am I going to move into? It visually shows you which field it is. An information tab will call out exactly where we're at at that point in time. Why so, I, I hate to get a, the product stereotype, right? It, it's not for the big farmer, right? No, sometimes the big farmers want to start there because the perceived lower investment and the opportunity to really observe the benefits they get from that. Then they'll go to work on some other pieces of their operation. So again, we want to invite as many people as we can into the GPS guidance business, and we can do it with the Easy Guy 250. When we take the next step, the Easy Guy 500, a little bit bigger uh, number, a little bit more horsepower, if you will, that has some more feature capabilities that we really like as we expand into autopilot. And one of those features is that integrated GPS receiver. You've heard a lot about the integrated receivers on the FMX, but the predecessor to that was the 500, 
whereby that GPS receiver is a DGPS receiver. It works with Omnistar XP and HP. It also is upgradable to RTK and, uh, and allows you to do autopilot control. So if you think about that crossover product, right, there's also a really, uh, probably an important break for customers to consider when they're thinking about where should I start if I'm going to make an investment. Some of them clearly start with the 250. Others that are a little closer to autopilot, with the right level of product knowledge, they're say, why don't I start with the 500? Because now I've got the upgrade ability to autopilot and I go all the way to RTK if I'd like. So we had great guidance with the 500, great connectivity to easy steer. We have the opportunity to upgrade. And really what we focused on for this last season is how to, how to take the 500 and move from a guidance display, a guidance receiver, into more of the application and the control. And so the ability to work on the variable rate application is really where we're going to get the next piece of functionality from the easy guide uh, 500. We have a lot of discussion points, right? The commodity prices uh, are decreasing every once in a while. They give us uh, some money back in the markets. Uh, it moves. Uh, inputs are still relatively high. We've got uh, variable rate applications. Uh, in the past, may have been considered to be a custom applicator only. Think about where we came from. You needed a multi-bin, self-propelled custom application machine for a lot of money to do it. And today, it brings it down to a little different level. Our intent with variable rate on the 500 is to help the guy that already owns the 500 go ahead and price the variable rate out at a very small incremental cost. Because I think that's what a lot of farmers want. Farmers, by nature, want to control, right? If I can do it myself, I prefer that. If I've got to contract that to a custom applicator and he's going to charge me four, five, six, eight dollars an acre, now I've got a different decision to make at that point in time. So we're working on giving them some control there, being able to do more of his own application.